We're going to finish up in John chapter 6. I want to read a couple of verses and then we'll read more of the chapter in a bit. John chapter 6, verses 53 and 54. So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. This probably sounds a little strange to some of us. Drinking the blood of Jesus eating his flesh. The early Christians were accused by uh, the pagans of being cannibals because of passages such as this. They didn't understand the reality of it. So a couple of questions that come to mind as we read those two verses. What does this mean, first of all? What does it mean to eat the flesh and drink the blood of Jesus. Secondly, does this have anything to do with the Lord's Supper? So we're going to try and answer those questions this morning and get into what Jesus was talking about in John chapter 6. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we open up your word, what I pray that your Holy Spirit would Allow our hearts, our minds to receive it. When Jesus first spoke these words, many misunderstood what he was saying. May we not misunderstand as they did. Understand its truth and, Lord, see how important these words are to us today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So what does it mean to eat the flesh and drink the blood of Jesus? Well, let's go back. Let's go back to verse 22 of John chapter 6. Earlier in this chapter, Jesus feeds the 5,000 with five loaves and two fish. An amazing miracle. And then he leaves. His disciples go out on a boat on the sea. And we read that Jesus meets them walking on the water. So there's a bit of confusion the next day because they didn't see Jesus leaving on the boat. So how did he get over uh, to the other side? So that's where we pick it up in verse 22. And it's important to realize the miracle, the feeding of the 5,000 with the bread and the fish that occurred right before this. Verse 22, on the next day, the crowd that remained on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there, and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Other boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got in the boats and went to Capernaum, seeking Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me, not because you saw signs, in other words, miracles, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set a seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, Then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is He who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to Him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, 
I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you, may, that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone, what is that word, everyone, everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. So the Jews grumbled about him. Because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. He said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him. And I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets. And they will be all, all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate manna, the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like the bread the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things in the synagogue as he taught at Capernaum. So what did Jesus mean? We talk about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. I think it's helpful to compare verses 40 and 54. In verse 40, Jesus talks about the will of the Father. And he says, Everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. And then this verse 54 says, Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood, has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. So in both verses, Jesus talks about people who have eternal life and will be raised up on the last day. In verse 40, he says those people are those who believe in him. And in verse 54, he says those people are those who eat my flesh and drink my blood. So he's saying the same thing in two different ways. He's not speaking literally when he says, eat my flesh, drink my blood. He's talking about faith. To eat the flesh and drink the blood of Jesus simply means to believe in him. Compare the two verses, that's what he's talking about. The whole passage I read is about Jesus talking about people needing to believe in him, trust in him. More than just an intellectual agreement about some things in the Bible that Jesus died and rose again, but to put our trust in him. To acknowledge that I am unable on my own to gain eternal life. I'm unable to gain acceptance with God because I am a sinner. And so I must trust in Jesus. I must trust and his death on the cross for my sin. And so it's not just believing in a creed or believing some things about Jesus that you read in the Bible, but it's putting your personal trust in him, really putting your eternal destiny in his hands. 
And so Jesus was talking about faith, trust, belief, when he said, drink my blood, eat my flesh. So the second question, does this have anything to do with the Lord's Supper? Because it sounds very similar to what the other gospel writers say when they write about how Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper. In Luke 22, verse 19, Jesus says this, and he's speaking of the bread, this bread is my body, or my flesh, which is given for you. So Jesus talked about bread being his body, his flesh. And so it sounds very similar to what Jesus says in John chapter 6, when he talks about eating his flesh or his body. In verse 51, he says, The bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. So two very similar statements. However, we need to be aware that the events of John chapter 6 occurred a year before Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper. So the Lord's Supper wasn't even in existence when Jesus said these things. And as we've already seen, eating and drinking in John 6 refers to faith, not literal eating and drinking. And one thing we clearly do not believe is that eating the bread and drinking the cup of the Lord's Supper somehow gives us eternal life. So let me be very clear on that. We're not saying, Jesus is not saying that somehow taking the bread, taking the juice or the wine of the Lord's Supper somehow gives us eternal life. He's not saying that. Jesus really is talking about faith, believing in him. So even if there is a connection to the Lord's Supper, it doesn't mean that. The Lord's Supper does not give us eternal life. So does that mean that John 6, what Jesus said here, has nothing to do with the Lord's Supper? Maybe we shouldn't be so fast to say that. It is true that Jesus spoke these words before the Lord's Supper was instituted. But something else we need to keep in mind is when John wrote his gospel. He wrote it in about A.D. 80. When was the Last Supper? In the early 30s. So about 50 years had passed, 50 years since the Lord's Supper was instituted. So the early Christians of the church had been doing the Lord's Supper for decades. And so when Christians would have read these words, they wouldn't have been able to help not to not think about the Lord's Supper. So I think John was aware of that. I know this is a bit of speculation, but John could not have, uh, it must not have avoided his uh, awareness that, that people would have thought of the Lord's Supper when hearing these words of Jesus. So although Jesus wasn't talking about the Lord's Supper in John chapter 6, uh, John knew his readers would think of it. They'd think of it when reading about eating the flesh and drinking the blood of Jesus. It's even possible that John wanted us and his readers, original readers, to, to think this because of several similarities between John 6 and, and Jesus instituting the Lord's Supper in the other Gospels. just want to go for a moment to, to Luke chapter 22. One of those passages in the Gospels, all of the other Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, have a passage on Jesus instituting the Lord's Supper. John, however, does not. And so this, in a sense, might be a sort of veiled reference to the Lord's Supper. Revelation, uh, sorry, Luke 22. Revelation was last week. Luke 22, verse 14. And when the hour came, he reclined at table, and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I earnestly desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. And then verse 19. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he 
broke it and gave it to them, saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. There are some similarities between this passage and John chapter 6. First of all, John 6 occurred close to the Passover. Uh, verse 4 says the Passover was at hand. Uh, both accounts of Jesus breaking bread, giving thanks, and distributing the bread. Verse 11, before his miracle, feeding the 5,000, we're told Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them. And then both accounts of Jesus saying that bread is his, his body or his flesh. And so maybe John wanted us to think about the Lord's Supper, even though he doesn't explicitly talk about it. And even though Jesus really wasn't talking about the Lord's Supper, he was talking about faith when he said, eat my flesh, drink my blood. Still, I think there can be a connection between the two. Even if John didn't intend for there to be a connection, we can still, I think, appropriately meditate upon this passage when we have the Lord's Supper. Because the Lord's Supper is also a declaration. When we eat and drink during the Lord's Supper, we are declaring that our faith is in Jesus. That we've done what Jesus told us to do to eat his flesh, to drink his blood. In other words, to take in the benefits from his body being crucified, his, his blood being shed for the forgiveness of our sins. And so when we, when we partake of the Lord's Supper, we're declaring that our faith, our trust, is in him. And so it's a declaration. We're declaring that we believe that he is the bread of life. He said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Whenever I go to an all-you-can-eat buffet, I try to get my money's worth. Probably shouldn't do that, but many times afterward I'm in agony. <laughs> and uh, I think to myself, well, I won't want to eat anything for a very long time after this. But then what happens? Only uh, a few hours later, I'm hungry again. Jesus wasn't talking about physical food like that, but... It is an illustration of how we're always hungry, always craving more, whether it's food or something else. And more money, an improvement to the house, another vacation. Uh, we're always wanting more. But Jesus said, whoever comes to me shall not hunger, Whoever believes in me shall never thirst. The people that Jesus originally spoke those words to were thinking only on the material or the physical level. They didn't understand what he was talking about. He had fed them physical food, real bread and fish the day before, and that's what they were looking for. That's what they were happy about. But Jesus said you need to search for something better than that, something that gives eternal satisfaction that will fill us forever. He said to them, verses 26 and 27, You are seeking me because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. You know, we can never eat a meal that will satisfy us, that will fill us for the rest of our lives. A little while later, we'll be wanting more. And Jesus says that's true really of everything in this life. Uh, there are many good things in this world that we can enjoy, but if that's all that we have, then we'll always be searching for more. They'll never really fill us, real, never really satisfy us. There will always be that empty, emptiness in our hearts. And Jesus says, I'm the bread of life. I am the one who can truly satisfy. If you come to me spiritually, you will never hunger. You will never what truly satisfies is the eternal life that can only be found in Jesus. We know that when we don't eat, uh, we get weak. I don't know if you've gone without eating for a prolonged period of time. Some of us 
have probably experienced that. We need food. We need nourishment. And we can view the Lord's Supper as, as a meal that gives us spiritual nourishment. We know that now we groan. talked about this last week. In these bodies. And we get weak. We get discouraged. But we also look forward to that last day when every believer will be raised up by Jesus. He said, everyone who believes on me will be raised up on the last day. Everyone. And that gives us strength, that hope, that comfort, that gives us strength as we declare during the Lord's Supper that our faith is in Jesus. We think about what all is ours because of him. So maybe you're feeling weak. Maybe you're feeling uh, discouraged. Maybe you're groaning because of the troubles of this life. But when we eat and drink during the Lord's Supper, we should remind ourselves that our faith is in Jesus. That he is the bread of life. That what he gives to us is what matters most. What truly satisfies. And that will give us strength, spiritual nourishment. And so no, Jesus was not talking about literally eating his flesh, drinking his blood. He was talking about faith in him. Putting your trust in him. And when we eat, when we drink during the Lord's Supper, we're declaring that, that our faith is in him. That we have found in him what we truly need, the bread of life, the one who truly satisfies, the only one who can give us eternal life. So is your faith in Jesus? Have you found him to be the bread of life? In him we find what truly satisfies. In him we find hope. In him we find strength. I urge you to come to Christ, to put your trust in him. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your will to send Jesus, your Son, into this world to be the bread of life, to give his flesh, to give his blood for our salvation, so that through faith in him we might have eternal life. Lord, as we partake of the Lord's Supper this morning, may we think of this, and we think of how it's a declaration of faith. When we think about what our faith in him gives to us the blessing, the gift of eternal life. May we gain strength, the strength we need from this. May we be spiritually nourished, we ask in his name. Amen.